Greetings and welcome to Hexed Encountered. In this video, we're going to reboot our game and take a look at the four factions we didn't use in the first gameplay video. Before we begin, I've decided to change it up a bit and we'll present the first round of gameplay in an AAR style recap and then move on to the live, well, recorded gameplay for round two. Since we covered round one in the first video of a different playthrough, but still round one, before we get going, I do want to mention that the game already has an expansion in P500. Yep, Herman has dipped further into his bag of tricks and come up with some new stuff to make the horrors even worse. I'm going to pop the link to the P500 in the video description. Okay, let's get started. Here's the Plum Island Constabulary, aka the Police Department. Key features of this group is the mobile compound, which is their paddy wagon and the special ability of their canine unit, Chase, and we'll get into that during the game. Next up is the Islanders Athletic Club, because jocks can be useful too. Some cool abilities in this group, and it includes Marsha, 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 and her sister Jan, and some other nice nods culturally too. The Greenport Township faction includes the mayor, because, you know, politicians are always useful in a crisis, along with Ed Cramden and Ralph Norton, whose surnames sure ring a bell, and who bring some nice abilities to the fight, as do the fire marshal and the EMT, who does make house calls. Finally, on hand to cover up, I mean fix the problem, is the Plum Island Research Lab Security Services. Kevin Blart and his team of security guards are super, super useful, and the trio of Docs, McCoy, Wenkman, and Corey, all have potentially very useful capabilities. The whole mess might be all their fault, but they're still a super useful faction. Let's take a quick look at our starting situation. Starting at the top of the map, we've got our six tracks loaded up with four murders of horrors apiece. You can see uh, the civilians who will be the first to be endangered, as well as some of our faction units who will be the first to try to slow down the hordes of horrors. The middle section shows two of the three bridges that were damaged in the storm, that was determined by a fate card during setup. They are bridges 6, 8, and 9. You can also see the power station where bus driver Ed Cramden is going to be asked to do some repair work. All four factions have units on the map here, and I attempted to cover as many of the six tracks as possible. At the bottom of the map area are our prime evac points, the docks and several heliports, including one in the compromised hospital area. All four of the faction's leaders are here as well. Okay, so let's do first contact. We draw a surge for our activation, and then a fate card with number one, meaning that track gets our surge and activities twice. As a result, whale and pool maintenance becomes the first contact and first victim of the horrors. For our first activation draw, we pull, of course, the impending doom marker, which gives us the event, the red sickness. And I am adding two red cubes to the biohazard draw bag. The Islanders Athletic Club is our second activation. For the crisis ad adrenaline part of the turn, we move Miguel Spitz from 1E to 1D to face the horrors in track one. The Brady sisters will stay in 1E for now. I'd like to eventually have them do crowd control and push the civilians south. Phil Tiger King, our golfer, will move up from 3C to 3B. And both Johnny Deer on his uh, riding mower, he's down in 6J, and Sid Calhoun, who is the leader, he's in 4K, they'll stay put for now. For our single action, we're going to move Spitz to 1B. And yes, I now realize that I inadvertently skipped the second activation for the horrors on track one, so they should be further down. But I did not notice this while I was doing it like an airhead. So apologies, I screwed that up. Our follow actions start with the constabulary where Hartman does crowd control, moving the Musman landscaping to area 4K. Luckily, we draw a no event on the fate card. That's a big relief. And move on to the township. And our action there is to have Ed Cramden start repair work on the power station. To do that, he draws a fate card, which is a two, and that removes one damage of the three on the power plant, but he also unfortunately draws an event. That event is Frenzied Horrors, where we draw a fate card that sends the horrors in track four over to track three. 
Our third draw is a fate marker, so we draw a fate card, which spawns three murders in track five and activates track four, which is empty thanks to the event that just occurred. So that's actually a good thing. The fourth draw gives us back-to-back -back horrors again. So with another fate card, and that one spawns three more murders in track five, and this time activates track two, sending four horrors down to the forest in area 2B. The next draw, our fifth, activates Greenport Township. Crisis Adrenaline moves Mayor Mayberry to 3I. Our Fire Marshal, Bill Laflamme to 2C. Dr. House to 2D. And we're going to leave Cramden and Norton stationary for the time being. Now, speaking about our Fire Marshal, Bill Laflamme has a pretty cool ability. He can use fire hoses for ranged combat. And since he is in 2C, he can hose down the horrors in 2B, and that's going to be our action. The Fate card gives us a 4, which according to Laflamme's uh, ability description, means we stun all four horrors in that stack and knock them back one space into 2A. Well done, Mr. Fire Marshal. Our follow actions start with Pearl, where Kevin Blart will attempt to repair the airport. He draws a six, which means he's taking care of business and working overtime. A complete repair in one shot. Even better, his fate card shows no event. Next, the Constabulary's Detective Friday takes a crack at repairing Bridge 6, which is an important link for moving side to side on the island. He draws a five, which is another good result, as his admin rating of five means he fixes all the damage. And again, no event card. Our last follow goes to the Athletic Club, and Miguel Spitz is going to take the fight to the Horrors in 1B. There are five murders there, which means they automatically inflict two hits. The building a terrain in that area means their five size is divided by four, which is 1.25, but it gets rounded up and becomes a two. Spitz's close combat rating gives him three dice, and with those three, he rolls a shield, a half hit, and a critical hit. The shield means he'll take only one of those two hits, and the critical hit means he gets a hit and he gets to do a re-roll. The re-roll provides another half hit, which when combined with the previous half hit makes a second hit and knocks that stack of murders down to three. We of course add a yellow cube to our biohazard bag and draw our next marker. Uh, it, it is worth mentioning that is a bit of a miracle as we again avoid an event card on the fate draw after Spitz's uh, follow action. The sixth draw brings out our third and final fate marker. The fate card has chaos for the spawn, so we're going to draw two more fate cards for their numbers and we'll add those numbers to the horrors in tracks one and three. Tracks one and two are activated, meaning Spitz has another close combat in, in 1B. Track two is going to pass through our stunned horrors that are in uh, 2A and land in 2B. In 1B, with three murders left, the horrors score one hit on Spitz. He rolls a one and a, ha and a half and a shield. So that gives him one hit and removes their hit. And that leaves two murders in track one and another yellow cube goes to the bag. The seventh draw activates our constabulary meaning the Pearl will end up being the last faction to go. For Crisis Adrenaline moves, the K-9 unit Chase will move from 6I to 5F. Commander Stallion will go from 6I to 6H. Hartman from 5I to 3K. And Drebin and Friday will split up, with Drebin going to 3F and Friday moving to 3E. The action will be Hartman attempting to repair the docks. He pulls a 3 on his fate card, and that removes 1 damage. Follow actions start with the Athletic Club, and Spitz will continue his fight with the Horrors in 1B. There are two left, so that's one hit for them. Spitz rolls a miss and two halves, which combine to provide one hit. So both sides take a single hit. Spitz now has two hits on him, and the Horrors are down to a single murder tile. Again, no event is uh, drawn on the Fate card. For the township, Cramden is going to take another crack at the power station, and this time he pulls a three. Repair underway, which removes another single damage, leaving one, and also luckily for us, draws a no event. Our final follow action goes to Pearl, who activate the Shore Patrol NPC down in 2J, which is the Coast Guard docks, and he, we're going to ask him to attempt to repair the area so we can open up evacuation activities down there. Unfortunately, this time the fate deck's not kind. 
It gives us a one, which is an epic fail and actually adds a damage. Now I could have elected to use a supply to offset this and get no effect, but I instead elected to keep the supplies because supplies are important. To top it off, the Shore Patrol then pulls an event on our Fate deck check, which turns out to be Hyper Horrors, and that sends the horrors that are on track three over to track two. Now the two stacks in uh, track 2A, or area 2A rather, cannot amalgamate into one because the stun effect of Laflamme's fire hose is still active. Now we move to our final activation of round one and it goes to the Plum Island Research Lab security forces. Crisis adrenaline movement sends Martha Winfrey from 4H to 4G, Dr. Wenkman from 6D to 6B, Dr. Corey 6D to 6C, and Dr. McCoy from 6E to 6D. Kevin Blart holds his position, and the action for us this time will be having Corey do crowd control to shepherd the Pittenger Law Office from 6C to 6D as we try to move some of these civilians down to the southern part of the map so we can hopefully evacuate them. Our last set of follow actions will start with the constabulary. Friday does crowd control, moving two civilians from 3E to 3G, and draws a no event fate result. The athletic club, we're going to keep Spitz uh, being aggressive and have him attack again. There's only one murder left, and but that will still inflict one hit. Spitz rolls two hits and a miss, which kills the last murder of horrors, but does not negate their hit, which means he ends up with three total hits for this uh, for this round. And it was quite a heroic stand for the swimmer, and we're going to try and get him healed up. He draws no event on the fate deck, which is nice. And so the township gets the last follow action of round one. And they're going to have Ralph Norton dig through the dump with a search action. The card is crates full of berries, and that reveals a civilian and three supplies in area 1J, Sherry's berries. It also exhausts the dump. Norton also ends up drawing an event, which turns out to be engine failure. So we draw a fate card. It gives us a two, and that causes the Coast Guard chopper to be flipped to its damage side. We wrap up the round by pulling two cubes from the biohazard bag. One of them is green and one is yellow. The yellow means we have to advance our biohazard track by one. And that, my friends, wraps up the AAR portion of this uh, video. It completes the first round. And now we're going to move on to some uh, play through action of second round. The afternoon of the first day. And the first thing we are going to do is draw our first token. And we draw Greenport Township. Greenport Township, they're the purple guys here. Crisis Adrenaline Phase. We're going to leave Bill LaFlam where he is. We have Dr. House right here. And what I wanted to do with him is actually move him. Now, his movement, foot movement rating is only a one, but we're going to slide him over here. Ultimately, I'd like to get him to Miguel Spitz to do a heal action. We have Ed, Ed crammed in here in the. Uh, power station and we're going to leave him there so that he can continue his repairs we also have mayberry the mayor here at the beach his movement rating is a two i think what we will do is leave him here as well i may have him do a repair action on the bridge what's nice here in turn uh two or round two is that we get two actions for each faction as opposed to the one we had in round one. And that will allow us to obviously do a couple of things. The first thing I want to do is we're going to have Laflamme use his ability again for combat, which is use the fire hose, which is his special ranged combat action. And we covered this in round one because he did the same thing then. But basically what we do is we draw a fate card for a number. And then if we get a one, it's no effect. Two to five, we'll push the number of horror tiles. And that would be these horrors here, which there are three. That would push those horrors back one area. So that would push them here. And this is what he did last turn. And there it is right there. And mark them as stunned. So we draw a card. And it is a two. So we take two of these and we move them here. And put a stunned marker on them, leaving just one there in that area. That also costs the, the faction another supply point, so we take their supply away. 
leaving them with zero currently. And with the hunger phase coming up at, and, uh, in round three, we need to see if we can get them some supplies. As I just mentioned, we need supplies. And we do have our damaged uh, power station here, which is down to a damage of one. So we have it crammed in, and we're going to use our other action for a repair. Hopefully get this and remove it, which will, re which will give them five supplies. So again, to perform a repair action, we have a table here on the book. We draw a fate card and we get a six, which is a great number. Now, if we look here, six, we get the working overtime, which removes all damaged markers. So this marker now goes away and the power has been restored. And for that, they get five supplies. And there is a five supply counter. And I'm going to put that in their supply cache. And Cramden has successfully restored power. And that's their second one. So now we would move on to follow actions. And we would begin with the uh, Pearl Security Services. So this would be the Brown faction. And we have the CEO is right here. We have Kevin Blart up here. But I think what we're actually going to do is we are going to have our Air Med helicopter, which is right here. Now, it's in a damaged area, so it would not be able to return here because it's compromised. But we can have it go from here to here because Blart repaired the airport and its helicopter or its helipad is now available. So we're going to take this and we're going to move it here. And that counts as their follow action. So we do have to draw a fate card. And it is no event card. So that is good. Then we would move over to the Plum Island Constabulary. The boys in blue. And we have Friday and Drebin here side by side. And down here we have uh, our canine unit and Commander Stallion. And all the way at the bottom, off shot is Hartman, who is the leader for the, uh, he's the chief, Chief Lee Hartman. So we can only do one. Looking at what we have here and what would be the best use. Now, I think these guys are here. They got slid over a little bit. I think what we'll do is we'll have Drebin do a crowd control with Partridge family and move them down here. Because the next step, I, I want to move everybody down. So we'll be moving Friday up here to get War Room and Fiedler on the roof repair moving down as well. We do have a little bit of time here and we have a unit that will be blocking track three, which does have some horrors. That would be uh, Phil Tiger King. He's off shot, but he's right above, right above this area in which uh, War Room furniture and Fiedler on the roof repair are. So let's draw our fate card for the uh, constabulary and we get draw event card stormy weather approaching during the entire next game round all boat and helicopter crap <laughs> helicopter units are treated as if they are disabled they may not move for any reason nor may they be used for evacuation of gunship combat actions place the stormy weather marker in the next game round box as a reminder at the conclusion of that game round the events effect ends if the last game round, this event has no effect. Here is our stormy weather marker. I'm going to put it on turn or round three. And so that means that we're going to have to use an action, one of the follow actions at some point this round to use this air med to get Luke's use the force comics out of there and at least get us probably one point. Yep, one point on our evacuation track. For our next follow action with the Islanders Athletic Club, we have Phil Tiger King here. As you can see right here, he has a two uh, ranged combat. So he will attack the horrors there. Now we do have to expend a supply for that, so we will do so, leaving them with one. Now it's one lone uh, murder there, so they get one hit automatically. And we roll two dice for uh, Phil here. Let me bring my, my tower in. And unfortunately, that does nothing. So he takes a hit from them and uh, does no damage. So that was unfortunate. And now we have to draw another fate card. 
And again, we get draw event card. And this time, mutated hornet swarm. So we draw a fate number first. That'll be the track it'll spawn on. And we count down the track, the number of areas equal to the current game round number. So that would be um, the second one. So they're going to be in B. Count through forks normally as if moving, but ignore other units and damaged bridges. Then spawn the murder hornet's mutation standee directly into the final area. If the moss man landscaping is on the map, their weed whackers stir up the hive into a frenzy. The mutation standee will conduct a free action immediately after spawning. Uh, moss man, I think he's on here. He is. He's all the way at the bottom. So let's draw our fate card first. We get a five, so they're going to be in five. And here they are, the murder hornets. So they're in track five, they'll appear here. And then they get an activation, which moves them three, but they're going to move here first. And the Lewis family, unfortunately, is going to uh, be subjected to an attack. The Lewis family is removed. We draw a yellow cube and put it in the biohazard bag. And the Hornets stop here. Well, that's bad. And uh, that track is one that we don't really have a ton of civilian units on. We have one here with Chase. But that's it. Um, but we are going to have to take them on in combat here. That completes activation for the Green Port Township. We'll draw our next one out of the bag. It is a fate token. So this is the horrors. We we'll draw our fate card. We get spawn on track five and activate is surge, which means we're going to draw a fate number and find out what track gets activated two times in a row. Fate number is five. So track five will get activated, which is our murder hornets. But first we have to spawn in track five, and this is going to be interesting because that track is massively large already. We have 10 here in track five, which is now going to become 13, and it's going to move. Such a large stack only moves one per activation, so it would move here and then here and be done. Now the Hornet has a three with an asterisk for swarming stings. The unit will move three areas, but four during night turns without stopping for units, and instead inflicts one hit and one biohazard cube. Oh, so I screwed that up before. I screwed that up when um, I did the Lewis family. So it should have, it should have moved um, here and inflicted one hit, which did, would have killed this unit anyway, and one cube. So ultimately the only thing that I missed was getting it to this spot. Now again, it's going to move here, which will inflict a hit on Chase. I'll put that into play, and then it would continue to move on and go two more and end up here. So it's almost all the way at the bottom of the map. And I know that went off camera, but it is in 5H right now. We need to put a cube in here. So that would complete their activation. We draw our next token out, and we get the Pearl Island security services or pearl security services now i'd have to consider that we have 13 horrors sitting here and we have two of the pearl units adjacent wankman here has a movement of one as does corey so wankman could move in here he does not have a ranged combat and neither does corey mccoy does but mccoy can't get there either because there's no connection to get to Kerry's corner then we have Blart, who also has ranged combat, but he also cannot get there. But he can get there if we move him down 1-2, so we'll do that. These are the crisis adrenaline moves, by the way. Now the problem here is this is a forest. It gets divided by 3. There are 13 in there, so that would mean it would be 5 hits for the horrors if we have combat. Wankman's health is a 5, so that could be a, a bit of a problem because that would actually use up all his health. He does have a 3 attack, which is decent, but this, this, this stack being so large, I think, means that we need to kind of try to take it on via ranged combat as much as possible. 
Having said that, I'm actually going to move both these guys up. One. There to hopefully forestall these guys. McCoy, I will move. Actually, I'm going to leave McCoy here so that he can move Pettinger. Pettinger. Polinger, sorry. Polinger Law Office, this way. Winfrey, we'll move her up to this area right here so she can hopefully do a crowd control to move these two units. The Vander Grump family and Leading Edge Graphics. Let's start moving them further down as well. There is a heliport up here. That might be something we could do as well, push them that way towards the heliport. Unfortunately, we know in round three, all the helicopters will be grounded due to the storm. So now we'll take our two actions with our group here. What we're going to do is we're going to move Blart up here to Kerry's corner. That will be one action. And they have both their supplies, so that is good. For the other action, we'll do an evacuate action with our air med here, which will end up staying at the airport. But Luke's use the force comics is going to be rescued, and they go into the they go onto the uh, Pearl Security Services map, and that gives us one evacuation point. And now we go to follow on action. So we will start with the constabulary, and again we have Friday and Drebin. Here we have Chase here, and we have Stallion here. They have two supplies, so I have not done this yet. But we're going to build our compound here, which is the paddy wagon because it is mobile. So this is the counter for it. We're going to put that right here, and it's at the high school. So he takes one hit, which gives him two, which is not ideal. And we spend two supplies. So we take our two supply marker and remove it. And that is their follow action. We draw a fate card. And it is no event. Next up would be the Islanders. The Islanders, I'm going to actually do a movement with Spitz. He's got a two. He'll go one, two, and meet up with Dr. House here so that House can heal him. Draw an event card, no event. Finally, we come to Greenport Township, and what we will do here is we'll have uh, crammed an attempt to repair the bridge. So we will draw a card. It is a three. Three is repairs underway. We remove one damage, so we'll just flip this guy over. It is now a damaged one. Draw a fate card for them. And miraculously, it is also no event. So that is good. So that means we just move on to drawing our next token and it is the impending doom draw an event card or, yep draw an event card so event card is acquiring the scent draw a fate number all horror units on that track will move to an adjacent connected area but only if that area has a non horrors unit in it horrors that do not that do move will conduct a close combat if there are two eligible areas, the area on the higher number track is chosen. If there are no units in the eligible areas, then these, this event has no effect. Okay, we draw <laughs> track two. So here in track two, we have one unit that is adjacent to a unit. So they're going to move over and we're going to have close combat right up here between Phil Tiger King and that one single murder of horrors. So we know they get one hit. Phil has a uh, rating of two, so he will, he will get his attack, and he gets a shield, which negates their hit and does no damage to them. So they're going to remain there together, and we move on and draw our next token from the bag. There are three left, and we draw a fate token. So that is the second fate token. No, there were four left. <laughs> there are three left now. And we draw a fate card. Track six, and we activate track one. So that actually isn't so bad. Put three new horrors on track six. And track one, 
has nobody to activate. So draw our next token. And we get the Islanders Athletic Club. Okay, what I'm going to do here, let's see. Movement. I don't want to move Spitz. I don't want to move the Brady's. King is in combat. I could move him out of there, but I, um, I don't want to. And then we have Sid Calhoun at the bottom. Now what he can do, perhaps, here's Sid Calhoun. He's got a movement rating of two. And we have some damage here, and we have also the bridge is damaged here as well. So I'm just going to move him over here to the Greenport docks, have him join up with fellow leader Hartman. And uh, ultimately, I want both these guys to work on repairing. We need to repair this connection, and we need to get rid of these damaged markers. And the same is true over here for our Coast Guard station as well. Now, as far as actions for this faction, the Islanders Athletic Club, they only have one supply left, so I can't build my compound. So what we'll do is I have two actions. We're going to have Calhoun attempt to repair the bridge. So we draw a fate card. And it is a five, which is a great number. Because a five is you've got skills. We move damage marker to the admin rating. His admin rating is a five. So that's more than good enough to remove this. So that goes away and the bridge is now open. Sweet. And now our second activity is we'll have the Brady's who are up here. Oh, sorry. We'll have King attack a murder of horrors. We know they get one hit from them. Let's see what we can get here. And we get a shield again. So it'd be nice if I could roll something that would actually, you know, hit them, but he, he at least takes no damage. So that finishes that. We go to the follow actions. And first up would be Greenport Township. So we do have Laflamme here. Let's try and clean, clear this damage marker so that we can open the heliport, even though we won't be able to use it until round four, most likely. I'm going to open the, try to help open the heliport with a repair option, or action, rather. And we draw four. And the four is you've got skills, just things we just saw. So his admin rating is also a four. He's going to remove the damage from that one. Opening up Oceanside Industrial Park. We draw our fate card. And we draw an event card. Our event card is a bridge to nowhere. Draw a fate number and find a find the bridge with that number. Place an additional damaged one marker on that bridge. Bridge one. Bridge one is one, two, one right here. Next up would be the uh, Pearl Security Services. For their action, we're going to have Blart attack these guys at range. So we'll have to spend a supply. They have two that will leave them with one. He has an attack rating, a ranged attack rating of two. And he gets one hit. So we remove one murder, leaving them with 12. And we draw our fate card and we get no event card. So that's good. And then finally, we come around to the Plum Island Constabulary. And let's see, let's have a chase move here. To try and chase murder hornets down. Now, Chase has an, uh, um, a special ability, which you can't, or special action that you cannot use uh, as a follow action. But I did uh, mention at the top that we would talk about it. So it costs an action. Unit may. It's a great sense of smell. The unit can forage one supply and decontaminate one level from its current area, even if the necessary icons are not present. And it will not exhaust the area. So that's kind of a cool ability. But in this case, we're just trying to get him to where he can attack. He does have a one ranged attack to attack the murder hornets with. So I need to do something there to kind of slow them down. And so we will draw our fate card and we get no event. So that's good. And that finishes that activation. And we now move to next. So we have one fate. And one uh, faction left, and we draw the fate token. So this one is track five, which is not the one I was hoping to see, um, for spawn at least, and then activate track two, which is also bad. 
So we're going to put three more in track five. Three new horrors here. And then we activate track two. Now, the only thing that happens with these is they get the stunned removed. And I believe that they would now combine. But they don't move. This one, however, does. Now it is four tiles, so it can move two. So it'll move here. And then it's going to move here. And it's going to have to do combat with Bill the Flom. Now, Bill the Flom does not, has not taken any damage yet. So we are, in an, we are in a building tile, building area. We have two civilians here, but that doesn't matter for this. We have four murders and La Flamme. La Flamme's close combat ratings are four. And because it's four murders, they get one automatic hit because we're in a building area. We're going to roll four dice for La Flamme here and see what he gets. And we get two and a half hits. Close combat damage resolution. We had one of these. It's a miss. No effect. We had two of these that affect one hit on the horror and then a light hit. We would need two to make a another hit, so it becomes a miss basically. But we do remove two tiles here, which is helpful. And now we will draw our final token, which is constabulary. For our free foot movement, we're going to take Friday and move him here. And then I'm going to take Drebin and I'm actually going to move him. His movement is a two. We'll move him one, two. And hopefully get up here to the Schnitzel Brewery and rescue the Brady family. And down here, we have our paddy wagon there. We have Chase here. We have Commander Stallion. We're going to use his movement to move him down here, back to where he actually started, I think. Only because we need to get, we need to start trying to get something done here. Unfortunately, he only has a foot movement of one. And I'm going to move Chase, even though this could end up being the end of the line for him, we're going to move him into to that area right there. So now we have two actions we can do in our next um, in our turn because that was all crisis adrenaline movement. So the first thing we will do here is we will have Chase do close combat with the murder hornet. So they get to they automatically inflict three hits. We don't roll or anything, and there's no adjustment for terrain, which wouldn't matter here anyway because that's clear. So they get three, and he's got three dice to roll. We get a critical hit and a hit and then a half a hit. So I'm going to take these two out and we'll roll our critical hit again and we get a miss. So that's two hits and Chase takes three hits and we'll address that in a second. So we give the Murder Hornet two hits. And its health is a three, so one more hit will kill it, which is good. Unfortunately, he already had two hits, and three hits would obviously be enough to, to kill him. But he does get his last stand. And the good thing about Chase is his bravery rating is a five. So I draw a fate card. It's a four, which is lower than his bravery rating. So he passes that check, and he survives and just has to move to a new adjacent area. So he'll move here. Murder Hornets are still around, but they have two hits and only one left. Now for my other action for the boys in blue here, I think what we'll do is we'll move Stallion down one. Have him stop there so that ultimately I now have two units that can attack. And he's got a three for ranged combat, which is ideal because you don't you avoid the area, you don't get you don't take any damage. You do have to spend a supply, and they are currently out of supplies. So that's an issue, and we'll see if we can do something about that um, in round three. Okay, so we go to follow actions, and we'll start with the uh, Islander Club. And we will have Sid Calhoun here attempt to remove this damage. So we'll do a repair. We'll pull a card. It's two. And a two. Is repairs underway for a damaged area or bridge? We remove, reduce it by one. Okay, so we will do that, and it is already a one, so we're just going to remove it, and that opens the docks. That opens the docks, which is great. We move to uh, Greenport Township now, and they can do a a, a um, evacuation action because we do have the Cheyenne Sky here. 
and we're not in round three yet, so it's still available. And we'll take the rough life dog grooming out, which gives us another point. So that one would go to uh, the township green. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I don't want to do that. Don't want to do that because what I do want to do is have Dr. House heal Spitz. Now, House, for his heal, he is expert triage when this unit uses its heal ability or provides its heal ability to another unit. Two hits may be removed instead of just one. Spitz has three hits, as you can actually see right here. So we're going to take two of these away. And thank you, Dr. House, for uh, making a house call, so to speak. We'll draw our fate card, and we get no event. So good luck there. And now we go to the Pearl Security Services, and they will use the evacuation that I mentioned previously to take Rough Life Dog Grooming and save it. And they will use the Cheyenne Sky to do that, which can actually move four units, which is sweet. And again, we draw a fate card, and again, we get lucky, and it's no event. And that is the end of round number two. So we come to the end phase. Where we would replenish the locations. What that does is just removes exhausted markers from areas so that they can be used again. That only happens in the night round. Rotation regeneration step. What that means is one of the two hit uh, hits for the murder hornets that were inflicted by Chase gets removed. They regenerate at the end of each round. And then the next one would be uh, the biohazard infection step. So we'll pull our bag out here and we draw two cubes. And let's see what we get. A green and a yellow again. So there are two red ones in here from an event. So that's good that we drew just one yellow. So we will advance our biohazard track by one. I'll do that off camera. And it would be uh, at two for round three. So that is going to do it for the video. I would consider doing another one. Please let me know what you thought of the kind of AAR style that I did for round one. Obviously, if I played all nine rounds, it would be a very long video, but a very long series of videos. But it is something I would consider doing because this is an excellent game. So as always, thank you for watching. I do appreciate it. Uh, please consider liking, sharing, and or subscribing. Let me know what you think via comments. If I screwed stuff up, which I probably did because I almost always do. Feel free to let me know about that as well. But that is going to do it. Uh, my name is Joe. And until next time, this has been Hexed Encountered. Almost forgot that. Until next time, happy gaming.